Hi, and welcome to Soul Church. Our prayer is that this service encourages you wherever you may be in life. Drop us any questions or comments you may have below. We've been hearing so many amazing stories about what God is doing in people's lives, and we'd love to hear yours. Take a second to send your story to stories at soulchurch.com. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the service. God bless. You can take your seats. Thank you, worship team. You're amazing. Well, it's great to be here, Soul Church. This church seems to go from strength to strength, just like your football team. And uh, I want to be the first to congratulate Norwich City on becoming a Premier League team for one season. And uh, we just, I mean, we speak faith into that. Obviously, uh, I'm involved with Leeds United, and we've had a little bit of misfortune, but we get knocked down, but we'll get back up again. And so it's amazing to be with you. And like Chantel says, we're great friends. And uh, I just wanted to, I think what John's done this week, and not just John, John and Lewis together. Let's not forget Lewis. Everyone needs a Lewis in their life. And um, they have, what they have done this week is phenomenal. I did a marathon a few years ago for a friend. Well, for a favor for a friend, because at the last minute, uh, someone dropped out. And so he said, could I do the London Marathon? Because if we don't do it, we don't get the money. So I was like, sure, I'll go and do it. And I just did it with no training. And let me tell you, it killed me. But to do seven on the bounce. So today to go and do a couple of hours with John uh, is a hope. I have to finish it. (laughs) Can you imagine doing two hours and struggling? Um, But I should be all right. But you feel like you can't really complain about anything. I'm sure you can tell you feel like, you know, how are you feeling? A bit tired? Oh, no, I can't say I'm tired because you've just, how long does that last? That's the question. I think it lasts till Wednesday, then it's done, then it's over, okay? Then he's making his own toast. Um, <laughs> but it's so good to be here, and uh, we're going to get straight into the Word of God today. I hope that's okay with you. It's the Word of God that we've come here for, and uh, the Word of God is what changes our lives. The coffee's good, the muffins are good, but the Word of God is actually what brings long-term fruit to our world. And so uh, I want to read from um, Matthew chapter 7 today, and we're going to read some verses in the message version. We're actually going to read quite a few verses. Uh, The last few verses are really what I want to speak about, but I love these the first few verses. I just thought they'd bless you. Anyway, it says this, don't look for shortcuts to God, for the market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do, the way, to li- the way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. Be wary of false preachers who smile a lot. <laughs> Dripping with practiced sincerity, chances are they are out to rip you off some way or another. Don't be impressed with charisma, but look for character. Who preachers are is the main thing, not what they say. And I love the preachers that you have in Soul Church, because it's not just what they say, but it's who they are that makes them special. A genuine leader will never exploit your emotions or your pocketbook. These diseased trees with their bad apples are going to be chopped down and burnt. Knowing the correct password, saying, Master, Master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is serious obedience, doing what my Father wills. I can see it now at the final judgment, thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preached the message, we bashed the demons, our God-sponsored projects, had everyone talking, and do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You're out of here. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life upon. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. The rain poured down and the river flooded. A tornado hit, but nothing moved that house, for it was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach. And when a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. When Jesus concluded his address, the crowd burst into applause. 
They had never heard teaching like this. It was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. Quite a contrast to their religious teachers. This was the best teaching that they had ever heard. I love this passage of scripture. And I want to just share in the time that I have with you today, Soul Church, on this title, The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But The Truth. The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But The Truth. How many of you know in a court case, when truth enters that case, the case is changed as a result of that truth? There are a whole lot of things that can be said in a court case, but as soon as truth enters the room, as soon as CCTV footage enters the room, as soon as some form of evidence enters the room, it is the defining factor on that case. And Jesus is using the parable here, the example of building things. Do we have any builders in the room? Any builders or carpenters? No, in Norwich, we have to send them all from the north to you guys to build your... (laughs) buildings. We're the hard workers. You're the southern softies, but we're the grafters. We're the... I want to love you guys. We're, we, you know, we love each other. I'm just, I'm just a little bit hurt because our football team, you, you replaced us. So I'm just dealing with that hurt, but we'll get over it by the end of the day. I'm not, when it comes to building, I'm useless. Like when it, I'm seriously useless. When it comes to any form of building or DIY, and when I say useless, I mean like pathetic. Abs, my wife, is the the DIY person in our house, she is the one who can put a frame on the wall, a picture frame. I can't even put a picture frame on the wall. Uh, I can't do anything. And some of you resonate, and some of you husbands are looking down right now as your wives are going, yeah, well, that's you. Um, I'm pathetic. I'm better at singing than I am at building. Um, but I won't show you that now. <laughs> but when we had our building in Leeds, we opened in September. We had six months of uh, renovation work. And we had builders in, and we had volunteers come to help. And I felt pretty useless. Because I, I, I was like, I'll carry the stuff in for you, but I can't build it. I'll like, encourage you, and I'll make the tea and coffee and sugar cubes. I'll do what needs to be done. I'll support you. I'll be the encourager. I'll put the music on. I'll build the Spotify playlist. That's my role in the building project, but when it actually came to getting my hands into the bricks, into the mortar, into the wood, I was fairly useless at that. But I know some of you in here, you're like natural builders. You just know what to do. You're the kind of person that has, you know, you have steel toe shoes, steel toe cap shoes. And if you have steel toe cap shoes, you know, you know what you're doing. You're the kind of person who has like toolkits all around your house, okay? You love it. You know that stuff. You've got the overalls. And when someone says, hey, can you come and do something at church, you turn up with your own tools and your own shoes and your own overalls. That is not me. That is you because you know what you are doing. Here is the reality, though, about that. Sure, some of you may be more gifted at building than me, but if I really wanted to learn and improve my building skills, I could. If I really decided to develop my skills to build, I could do that if I put the attention towards it. Some of us look at life and think, well, I could never do that. But the reason we could never do that is because we never apply ourselves to do that. Building, you could say, is it natural gifting or not? I'm sure there are some aspects which come a little bit more naturally to some than others based on how you are wired and based in your makeup. But the truth is, if I want to improve at something, I can improve at something. The difference is I've never put into practice what I have heard. And Jesus is speaking here saying the truth of God's word is good, but you have to put it into practice. You can't just say, well, I'm not good at that. You can't just say, well, that's for somebody else. No, you have to get it and you have to do something with it. He's saying you've got to work this into your life. The word of God that goes forth every week or every midweek through small groups or through studies or whatever you do, you can't just take it and leave it where it is. You have to work it into your life. You have to stir it into your life. You have to digest it into your life. I can't build anything of substance in my life if I'm not prepared to work it into my life. And I pray that 2019, the rest of it, and 2020 for Soul Church would be a year of substance for you. 
It would be substantial for you. It wouldn't be a year of sand that is grainy, that just flows through the hands, and it feels like it's a lot, but it just, it just happens to fall. No, but there'll be substance in your life. There'll be substance in your family. There'll be substance in your church. And I truly believe that if you can take this word, this Bible, if you can take what Jesus says, if you can take what these 66 books say, and if you can apply them into your life, then I truly believe, because I've seen it time and time again, that you can build a marvelous house. You can build a beautiful house. It doesn't have to be some form of mansion somewhere, but you can build a life of substance. You can build a healthy home. You can build a strong marriage. You can build a strong future, but you have to apply the Word of God. And Jesus is saying... We've got two options to build upon. Very simple. We either build on sand or we either build on rock. Very, it's very simple. You, you, you choose how you want, where you want to build your life on. And you can build on both of those materials. It sounds so obvious, but then we on wonder why do our lives sometimes fall with a great crash? Why do sometimes you'll see somebody and they're doing so well and then suddenly, boom, it's like they've just crashed or in our own life. We feel like we're doing well and then a circumstance or a situation comes our way. And within moments, we, we, we feel unsettled. And before we know it, you know, we're, we're crashing down. Or we, like Jesus says, the illustration of the house that fell, we feel like our life is falling. Here's the thing about rock and sand. Rock and sand is essentially the same thing. If you think about it, sand is simply finely divided rock particles. So if we got a big rock and we smashed it all to pieces and we just took every particle off, we are producing sand. So essentially, they are the same thing. But sometimes what we do with the Word of God is we finally divide the particles of the Word of God, hoping that it will be okay. We'll take a verse here, and then we'll take a verse there, and you know, we'll say, well, grace is all I need. That's, that'll be fine for me. Or we'll say, faith is all I need. That'll be fine for me. Or the Holy Spirit is all I need. And we take these individual particles. But what I've realized is we need the whole thing. We need the whole word. We need every particle together. We need every one of the 23,145 verses in the Bible. And some of those 23,000 verses I don't like, but just because I don't like them doesn't mean I don't need them. I can't just pick and choose and go, well, I'll have that one, but I won't have the other one. No, the substance comes when the Word of God is put together. That is the rock on which we build our life upon. That is the substance. And we want to build marriages of substance. How many of you want to build a marriage of substance? Build a marriage of substance that goes beyond sex. Build a, build a friendship of substance that goes beyond social media. Build a relationship with God of substance that goes beyond a Sunday morning service. A substantial life is built upon a substance. A substance. And the reality is, verses 25, Jesus says, and verses 27, the man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house on the rock the similarities between those two builders is that they both face the same conditions. They both face the same conditions, but they both built upon different foundations. And in both conditions, both builders both faced the rain that came, the streams that rose, and the winds that blew and beat against the house. The rain the streams, and the wind. It wasn't like one person was protected from that and the other one was more exposed to that. Just because one did their daily devotional doesn't mean that they were protected from that. Just because someone tithed every month doesn't mean somebody was protected from that. Just because somebody serves on a team doesn't mean they were protected from the wind, doesn't mean they were protected from the streams, and doesn't mean they were protected from the rain. Everyone faced the same conditions. And I don't want to be a bringer of doom today on this Sunday, but life tells me that rain comes every year. I think it's raining now. <laughs> life tells me that streams will rise every year. Life tells me that winds will blow every single year. 
And you, you might be in a season of your life of sunshine. Norwich have got promoted. Business is going well. My wife looks beautiful. Everything's good. But life tells me in a few months, something else might happen. Situations come. The wind will blow and the rain will come and the streams will rise. Because here is the reality. You cannot escape the conditions. But you can stand firm within the conditions. And what I'm bringing today, I want to bring a pastoral message to us. And that's what I am, a local church pastor, trying to help the church understand. I can't do a lot about the conditions, but I can do a lot about how I stand within those conditions. And how I stand firm within them. Because I see so often in church, people are doing well, but then the conditions change. And before I know it, they're really struggling. And as a church, we want to help them build strong foundations for when those conditions to do come. Because what I've seen so much in our church, ourselves at Life Church, is it's not the conditions that crash the house. It's often the foundations. It's not often the situation that comes. But it's the foundations that their life is built upon that cannot cope with the condition. You see, somebody can experience the same level of wind or rain. And one can really struggle with it and one can stand strong within it. How can John do seven marathons in seven days and other of us would struggle to run 700 meters? It's because one has prepared himself for what is to come where the other one hasn't. Hashtag no judgment. <laughs> How can somebody withstand something and somebody else can go, I could never go through that. It's, you know, it's funny because sometimes um, some people will say, oh, I can't be there today, I've got a cold. And where other people are coming to church and they've got like, you know, broken legs and broken arms and issues with their back and yet they're coming to be in God's house to serve and they'll do whatever it takes to get there and if it takes a bus and if it takes me having to sit down for a rest, it's okay, Why well, my back's painful but I want to be in God's house today and I want to serve and other people are, oh, oh, choo! struggling today. Similar conditions but very different response to those conditions. And at Soul Church, can we build some strong resistance to some of the conditions that come our way, be it Brexit, be it whatever happens in our society, but whatever comes in our city, that we stand strong because we all have to deal with uncertainties. Uncertainties. We can't predict what's going to happen in the next few weeks or months or years. We don't know what's going to happen with the economy. We don't know what's going to happen politically. We don't know necessarily what's going to happen in all aspects of life. And we can't, we can't predict what can happen. But we do know uncertainties can come. But we have to place our hope and our trust in the word of God and remain strong. But the reality is, for all of us, let's get real in here. Sometimes uncertainties in life can cause us to wobble. <laughs> and I love that word, wobble. It's a very English word. I don't think you'd ever hear like a Joel Osteen or a T.D. Jakes use that word, wobble. But it's true. So often, uncertainties can cause us to wobble. And, and here I have a, a wobble board. And uh, these are used by fitness fanatics. <laughs> And sometimes circumstances in life cause us to wobble. It can be something that happens in our marriage. It's something that happens at school. It can be something that happens with our mum and dad. It can be something that happens when we go and see a doctor and we get a report back. It can be something that happens to our bank balance immediately. Something happens, someone takes money out of it. it all of these things. And before you know it, you're like, you were strong, but, na but now you're wobbling, wobbling a little bit. And I want to say today to you as a church, and I know I'm not your senior pastor, but I'm sure John and Chantel would understand it's okay to wobble. <laughs> Sometimes we've been in church where you go, don't wobble, stop wobbling. <laughs> stop wobbling. <laughs> sort it out. Get straight. Get right. Come on. This can't last any longer. It's okay to have a wobble. It's okay to sometimes have some sort of uncertainties, and it's okay to have some questions, and it's okay to sort of not always understand everything and feel a little bit sometimes unsettled.
But my question to you when that happens is, where do you go when you wobble? The question I have for you is, what do you turn to when you wobble? Because so often when you wobble like this, it's easy to turn to a pint of beer. It's easy to turn to an old relationship that you used to know that used to bring some comfort to your life. It's easy to turn to watching something or doing something or a hobby that you do. And before you know it, I'm wobbling, so I need to go back to what I'm comfortable with. I need to go back to what makes me feel good. No, what do you turn to when you wobble? When the uncertainty comes, where do you go? And what do you do? Because all of us this year will experience some wobbles. Sometimes those wobbles come in our faith, let's be honest. Sometimes those wobbles come in, I don't understand, God, why you would allow that to happen. I don't understand why the Bible says that. I don't understand why I need to go through this and experience this. Sometimes the wobble comes in family. Sometimes it comes in marriage. Am I in the right relationship? Sometimes it comes through, have I, done, have I chosen the right degree? Am I in the right school? Am I doing the right thing? We all wobble at times. And I think our role as a church is to help you make stable decisions in unstable conditions. I think that's part of our role as a church, is, is to help you make strong and stable decisions that take place in unstable conditions. And the only way to do that, like Jesus says, is to build your life on rock foundations. And the only way to do that is to apply the word of God in every season. You can't just start applying this stuff when the wind is coming. You can't just start applying this stuff when the floods are arriving. Sometimes it's too late. You've got to apply it in every season, when it's spring, and when it's summer, and when it's dry, and when things are good, you don't just start tithing or just start getting involved when you're at a place of devastation. Sure, you can do that, but why not try it doing it when things are going well, and when things are strong, and you start preparing yourself in that season. Every day, they used to tell me, is a building day. Every day is a school day. Every day is a growing day. Why? Because it is the power of application, where you put something into operation. Where you take a verse, you take some wisdom, you take some truth, and you put it into operation. And there is one thing that Jesus speaks. There is one thing today that I want to communicate to you that I want you to put into operation. And the one thing I want you to put into operation whenever you experience a wobble, Whenever you experience any form of uncertainty, the one thing is truth. Everybody say truth. 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 The whole truth and nothing but the truth. That the foundations of our lives are built upon truths. They're not built upon lies. The foundation of our lives are not built upon doubts. They're not built upon opinions. They're not built upon the majority. They're not built upon traditions. They're not built upon agendas. They're not built upon perceptions because lies and doubts and opinions and agendas and traditions and perceptions, they won't stand any storm that comes your way. And if the wind blows against your family, and if the wind blows against your house, let me tell you, an opinion about something is not strong enough. A tradition of what your grandparents used to do and believe in is not strong enough. An agenda or a perception is not strong enough. You will crumble and you will quickly fall if you only build your life upon opinions. If you only build your life upon perceptions. You have to build your life upon truth, which is why Paul says in the book of Ephesians, you have to put on the belt of truth because it is the belt of truth that brings stability. It is the belt of truth that brings sturdiness, that brings strength to your world. That is ultimately what will keep your life together. Opinion won't keep your life together and a perception won't keep your life together. It is only truth. And in a world of swirling false realities, 
That's how I can define it, swirling false realities. You only have to watch Question Time on a Thursday night to see a world of swirling false realities. And I love watching those kind of programs because I love to hear different people's opinions and side of stories. But you've got everyone going, yeah, over there, and over here, yeah, who knows? <laughs> it's just these swirling false realities, almost like I'm spirit dancing. That, oh, blah, blah, blah. Do you have that in church? Do we have spirit? Can we have some spirit? Now, that's tonight. That's for the evening service. We're going to get the flags out and the banners. And... But that's sometimes what our life is like. Just these swirling false realities. Perceptions and opinions of everyone saying what they want to say. And what I want to say in these final few minutes today, I want to give you, and I'm going to tie in with the theme of your weekend, of your week. I want to give you seven in seven this morning. I want to give you seven truths to help you in seven trials. Seven truths to help you in seven trials. It's all good. It's all good. The Bible says in the book of James... That blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. That there is actually a blessing. That when you go through a trial and you stand strong within that trial, there is a blessing as a result of that. I love that. Because it helps me understand just because I'm going through a trial, I can still get blessed as a result of this trial. Just because I'm going through a wobble, I'm going through a difficulty, I'm going through a circumstance, I can be blessed as a result of this trial if I can stand the test. And how do I stand the test? I build my life on truth. I build it on a rock. And so seven truths for seven trials. Are you ready for number one? When the trial says, I'm feeling a little insecure about my identity. What does the truth say? If I can just have my first brick. Look, we've got illustrations today. We've got, thank you so, oh, the nice guns. Okay. <laughs> Let's move this. There's my first truth that I'm laying today. When the trial says I'm feeling a little bit insecure about my identity, the truth says God loves me, he is for me, and he is on my side. That's not subjective, that is truth. That every day, God is on your side. That every day, God is fighting not against you, but he is fighting for you. That's why the word of God says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? So just because I'm feeling a little bit insecure about my identity and who I am in God, he is your father. He will protect you. He will provide for you. Isaiah 41 says, I am with you. I am your God and I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you. How many of you know that is truth? That's not just an opinion and that's not just in a perception. That is the truth. And that one rock, I tell you what, that will keep you going by yourself. <laughs> Sometimes that's enough just to know that God loves me, God is for me, and God is on my side. And when I'm standing on this, the rain can come and the wind can come, but guess what? God loves me. The wind can beat against my house and the streams can rise, but guess what? God is on my side. And despite the challenge of it, I'm not undermining the challenge of it. There is great comfort in the truth of knowing that God is for you. He is on your side. Yes. Trial number two on this second rock, this second brick that we're going to lay together. When the trial says life is really hard right now, the truth says but God is still good, even when life may be bad. That's truth. That God is still good, even when life may be bad. I think for us as Christians in 2019, one of the hardest things we have to sometimes help people understand is that God is good. People think God is some powerful being in the midst, 
some sort of dict- sovereign dictator up there. But the truth, like you shared amazingly last Easter weekend, and many of us did around the world, the essence of it is you need to know God is good. And the goodness of God doesn't always look like a smiley, happy emoji. <laughs> doesn't always look like the goodness of God is just a big smiling God smiling down on you. I'd like to think it was. But God still has good plans and good fruit and good stuff when everything appears opposite to that. And believing the truth of this, of the goodness of God, is really important because it helps you understand that if God is good, listen to this, if God is good, then he is also able. If he is good, then he is also able because he has the ability to turn a situation around. Why? Because he is good. There are plenty of people with power, but who don't do good with power. But if you have the ability to do good, how many of you know that can turn a situation around? That's why Psalm 145 verse 9 says, God is good to all and his mercies are over all of his works. God is good even when life may be bad. And I start to build my truth on these things. Number three, come on, you can bring it up and you can lay it down. You can build a be a, look at this foundation stone builder. You wore the right t-shirt today, my friend, as well, because those muscles are popping out of those t-shirts. <laughs> Trial number three says it's probably best just to give up. It's probably best just to give up. But the truth says, the truth of God's word says, I can do all things. And I can overcome all things. Because Christ's strength dwells within me. I can overcome all things because Christ's strength dwells within me. Many of us know Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I want to help you today, church. You are not a punch bag. Stop being a punch bag. Stop being beaten down. Stop being every day beaten by a person at work or an office or a culture or an environment or a family member or a home situation. Stop taking the punches every day and understand that I can overcome all things. Because Christ's strength dwells within me. I can rise up with confidence. Don't be walked over by the devil's schemes. He has given you strength for a reason. Use that strength. Paul says, I might be hard pressed but not crushed. I may be perplexed but not in despair. I may be persecuted but not abandoned. I may be struck down but not in destroyed. Why? Because the same power that raised Christ from the dead, guess what? It also lives in me. And I want to live in the but not. It might not be perfect, but I'm not yet finished. It might not be all oh, singing and dancing, but I'm still standing here. Build your life upon that truth. Don't give in this year, but understand that you can overcome all things. Truth number four comes and says this, when the trial says, I can't see any breakthrough coming. I can't see any breakthrough coming anywhere. The truth says, guess what? Favor follows me. Favor follows me. That's a truth to build your life upon. That's not prosperity gospel teaching. That's a God who has goodness and mercy, surely following me all the days of my life. Psalm 23, truth. And how I always envision goodness and truth, goodness and mercy is that I'm walking here and you've got goodness and mercy just following me behind like two little kids. And no matter where you go, hey, there's goodness, there's mercy. And if I go here, there's goodness and mercy. It is the goodness of God. Why? Because favor is following you and if it's a job opportunity and if it's a breakthrough and if it's financial provision and if it's healing and if it's a house and if it's an opportunity the question you want to ask yourself this morning is why not why not why can't I have that why can't God provide that why can't I get that breakthrough why can't I get that job why can't I under- break, follow why because favor follows me 
Trial number five, next brick. Trial number five says, why am I struggling to feel happy and fulfilled? And many of you face that trial. Why am I struggling to feel happy and fulfilled? But the truth, number five, says my contentment and my happiness and my peace will not be found in a person or a place or an event, but is always and only found in Jesus. Some of you today, you've got to stop the search. Stop searching for the fulfillment and stop searching for the happiness and the contentment in him or her or there. It is found in Jesus. Paul the Apostle says, for I've learned the secret of being content. And my secret of being content is that I am at ease with God. There's just an ease with God. And I'd love to encourage you, church, to, to rest in him. You don't have to strive to find this contentment. No, rest in God. You don't have to keep searching for it. Your contentment is and will always only be found in Jesus. Trial number six, as we bring this to a close, says, When the trial says I'm bored and I'm confused as to what should be, I should be doing with my life, And that's many of a trial, many of you should probably face. I'm bored and confused. Life just seems fairly mundane. But the truth says, I'm here to make a difference to this world. Because my life is bursting with purpose and gifting and calling. Church, there is so much in you. There is so much in you. The Bible says that you are called, guess what, according to purpose. And your calling will always connect with his purpose. And your calling isn't simply your nine till five. It's not simply go to work and come home from work. Your calling, it's who you are and it's what you do with who you are. That's what matters. It's not only what you do, but it's why you do it. Sometimes we're obsessed with our calling all about what we do. No, your calling is more in the why than it is in your what. And remind you today of the truth of God's word when it comes to your calling. There is calling in you. There is purpose in you. There is gifting in you. And you might be bored and you might be confused as to what your life is all about right now. Build your life on the truth that he has purposed you, he has called you, and he has gifted you. And final one, number seven. When the trial says, I cannot see a way out of this. The truth says... Whilst I walk with him, trust him, and acknowledge him, there is always, always hope. There is always, always hope. It could be infertility. It could be bankruptcy. It could be terminal illness. It could be a major, major wobble. A major, major uncertainty. But I love what it says in Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope. See, the truth of God's word is that this is one giant book of hope. Just because you can't see it, you can still hope for it. Proverbs 23 says there is surely a future hope for you. And your hope will not be cut off. You see, if I have these seven truths for these seven trials and I build my life upon these foundations, what it means then is that when the wobble comes, because the wobble will come, I prefer to wobble on some truth. (laughs) I prefer to wobble on some truth. If I'm going to wobble, then wobble here. Wobble on these foundations. Wobble on these truths. But the moment I take myself off and start wobbling and I'm not on the truth is when I begin to struggle and it's when I begin to wobble on sand. But I want to build a life where I can build it upon the rock. And every one of you has the word. Every one of you has access to the word of God through a book or through listening or through watching or through conversing. Put it into practice to build a strong and a stable life, a strong, stable family and a future and a business and an identity. Because when the rain and the wind and the streams come, we can stand as a church and say, hey, we're ready for you. We're ready for you. Because the job of this church and the job of all of our churches is to prepare you for life ahead. Let's give up trying to make 
work on our own. We can make this on our own. I'll be fine on myself. I'll be okay. I can get through this by myself. I don't need anyone. I don't need, I can do this. I'm strong enough. No, you can't. This stuff is tried and tested. It works. Be encouraged today that the truth of God's word works. It works. And if I can build life upon life and rock upon rock and verse upon verse and book upon book, friend upon friend, if I can build this truth into my life, whatever comes my way, I can stand. Why? Because I've built my life on the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in Jesus' name. Can we stand up to our feet today? I want to pray for you as we close. And the first question I want to ask everyone here today is, do you know Jesus? Is he even in your world? Because if he isn't, today is the day to include him in your world. Maybe for the very first time, or maybe because you need to recommit your life to him today. Wherever that might be, there's no judgment here, and we're not trying to single you out. I'm not going to call you to come and river dance on this platform. Right where you're stood, just say, I need Jesus in my life can't keep trying to go through this by myself and you might be like I'm going through a big wobble you might be like I'm actually wobble free right now (laughs) no matter where you find yourself we all need Jesus we all need a savior not just on Good Friday and not just on Easter Sunday but every day of our lives with every eye closed right now no one's looking around other than just a couple of members of our prayer team who are praying for you today would you just have the boldness and the confidence just to raise your hand up in the air and say yeah that's me today And once you've put it up, you can put it back down again. But just shoot your hand up in the air and say, that's me. I want to receive Jesus in my life today. Maybe for the first time or maybe, like you said, to recommit your life because you feel you've drifted, you've distanced yourself a little bit. But today, he's calling you home. Come on, church. Let's be praying right now for every person in church. Amazing. Somebody here. Somebody down here. Somebody down here. Come on, is there anybody else? Just join with these hands raised today. Don't be embarrassed. This is the greatest moment of your life. Somebody else down here. Somebody else there in the middle. Praise God. Come on, so good. Thanks again for tuning in. If you said the salvation prayer today, we'd love for you to email connecttofaith at soulchurch.com so we can talk a little bit more about this incredible decision that you've just made. And if at any point in the service you felt moved to give to any of our local or global initiatives, then head to soulchurch.com and click on giving at the top of the page. We're so glad you tuned in today and we hope to see you again soon.